everybody doing? Good morning. Welcome to Kingdom Application Ministries. Uh, hey, good morning, everyone. Hey, I am here. The Lord is putting up. Uh, uh, there is a word in the house, and I just wanted to say thank you all for coming this morning. And to let you know that, you know what? God is good. He is good all the time. And I just thank God for being here. Uh, oh, wow. My, what you call the connection is still trying to connect up. But we, we're we not going to worry about that right now. We're just going to keep going. Um, and so at this point, I'm just going to ask that you guys, uh, that you bear with me uh, and that... Uh, that we come on into this room and get ready for what the Lord has to say. So let us pray. Father, I just thank you right now for this time and this season. I thank you for rest. I thank you for peace. I thank you for relaxation, Lord. I thank you that you have uh, given us this space, oh God. Father, I, I know many people are traveling. Father, you have given me an opportunity to travel and even get some rest. And so, Lord, I am grateful and I am thankful now, Lord, I pray right now that you forgive us of our sins, blot out our iniquities, and prepare this ground to receive what your word has to say, O oh God. Father, let it fall upon good ground. Let it bring forth much fruit. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 I am back. Yes, I've been out for, for a minute. I took some time off and got away, but thank God I had a chance to spend some time with my mom. And family in Chicago, my favorite cuz, but uh, I just want to thank God for what he's doing right now. And um, if you're here today on this earth watching this, hey, you're in a good place. You're in a good place. Uh, this morning, I want to focus again. I want to talk to the men. Uh, us, we as men have to understand that our help comes from the Lord. Our help is we have no other help but him. The world is against us, the government, the government systems, the police department. And now even when you go through a divorce, your ex-wife is your enemy. You have no one standing in your corner. And I don't understand why we can't get God, why we can't humble ourselves and realize that guess what? We're talking about, we're, we're talking to our creator. We're talking about the one who has a history of helping our forefathers throughout our journeys. Amen. If you look, I posted something in my, um, I pulled up a post in my um, storyline. It was dealing specifically with the guy who found a 15th century Bible with pictures of the apostles and all of these. And guess what, who they look like? Hmm. Yes, a 15th century Bible, and it had uh, a picture of Matthew and some of the other saints in there, and guess who they look like? Yes, I, it, it, all that really don't matter. What does matter is where is your heart? If your heart, you have given your heart to Christ, then let's just follow him. In the Bible to Kingdom Application Ministries, it says it's time for us to repent and believe this gospel. Jesus, he died. He did all these things. He answered the curse, uh, the, the requirement of sin through his blood. And all we have to do is accept it and apply it and move forward. Move forward in righteousness and no man can stand before you. Go with me to Isaiah, the 43rd chapter in verse 26. Isaiah 43, verse 26. And we'll almost start reading right there. And it says, put me in remembrance. Let us plead together, declare thou that thou mayest be justified. Mm -hmm. God wants us to be justified in where we are. Okay, so he said, put us there and let us be justified. Thy first father have sinned, check. And thy teachers have transgressed against me, check. Therefore, I have profaned the princes of the sanctuary and have given Jacob to the curse and Israel to reproaches. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, if you look at our nation, you look at us, man, it, it, it's a shame the way we carry ourselves as men, especially the young men. You, you, you're walking around with your butt showing, 
I, I'm just going here this morning. Isaiah 20 in verse four tells us that he led people, he, they were led captive into captivity, even with their buttocks uncovered. So you walk around with your butt uncovered, basically prophesying to yourself that I'm on my way to jail. Yeah, that's what it says. It tells, that's what the Bible said it was doing. So if you walk around here doing it, it definitely ain't cool. And I, you know, I'm not going to get into the history of all this, but what, what is wrong with us trying, being, being man enough to just say, hey, I am, I am proud of who I am. I have some integrity about who I am. What is wrong with us saying, okay, God, the world is not helping us. The systems are not helping us. How come we can't humble ourselves and call on the one who has a history of helping us from the beginning? Hmm? Isaiah 43 begins with, but now thus saith the Lord. Uh-huh. It says, he says, but now saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and that he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. God wants us to know that we belong to him. We belong to him and him alone. When thou, he said, well, check this out. When thou passest through the waters, I'll be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shall not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. That this is a history of God keeping us. He says, for I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. I gave Egypt for thy ransom, Ethiopia and Seba for thee. Since thou was precious in my sight, thou hast been honorable. And I have loved thee, therefore will I give men for thee and people for thy life. Don't you know, God, it will keep us. Men, we, we, we can't keep continuing to, dem and, I, and I'm just going, why are we marching? What, what's, what's, what, what? Marching ain't solve nothing. If we want to solve some problems that we're having in this government, in this society, we have to band together and keep our resources out of those systems. That's right. I said it. Get that. Quit buying their stuff. That's right. Quit buying the products. Quit buying the. Quit buying. Quit. Get your money out of there. Period. We've had some black owned banks established and, and we, we won't even look for them. Look for the banks. Remove your resources from them and things will begin to change because they, look, I'm going to tell you money is money is what's controlling the whole gambit of other, of all these things. Guess what? That's why Biden passed that law, passed a new law for the uh, prosecutors can have another, an additional 10 years to, to, to research and prosecute people who took the PPP loans. We know who took those loans. It was us. It was the poor people. It was those. It was those who had no hope. And you, you want to use an excuse? Look, <laughs> I am telling you, all of this ties to the money. It goes. It's all. And if I lock you up, I know you're gonna spend at least fifty to hundred dollars a month. If I got. 465,000 black males locked in jail. You multiply that by $100 a month and you tell me what you come up with. Tell me, that's per month. In the prison system, the prison system is about the money, but guess what? We are too lazy to humble ourselves and call on God. Man, come on. Young men, I look, I, I, I can't talk to the people that have already lost it. I'm talking to the people that have come back from jail. Don't go back. If you, God say, I will bless anything you put your hands to do. Psalms 1 verse 3, whatever you put your hands to do, he just got a requirement. God requirement does not change because the clock is ticking. His requirement remains the same. Delight yourself in me. 
Delight yourself in my word. Meditate on it day and night. Hey, be only be thou strong and courageous. God has been telling us the whole time how to get a hold to him so that he can operate in your life so that the kingdom and its righteousness will be added unto thee. All you have to do is follow the plan. But we want to go with the world's plan. Yep, we got lawyers out there right now that cannot practice law because they didn't stick with the plan. We got, uh, we, it's, there's so many things out there happening and they're all happening to us because we refuse, we refuse to do what God asked us to do. Amen. So we got to get to a place now. We have to get to a place not only where God has not only established us, but we got to get to a place where we accept what he has done for us on the cross. Amen. We have to get to that place where God has God has done so much for us. He has given us everything. And yet we as a people refuse to acknowledge him. I, I, I don't get it. He said, since verse four, since thou were precious in my sight, thou has been honorable and I have loved thee. Therefore will I give men for thee. Fear not for I am with thee. I will bring thy seed from the east and gather thee from the west. I will say to the north, give up, and the south, keep not back. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth, even everyone that is called by my name, for I have created him for my glory. I have formed him, yea, I have made him. Did you hear that? He said, even. see, that's why I'm saying color. That's what we're getting it twisted that we're talking about this color thing. Color has nothing to do with it. Did you hear what he said in that verse? He said, he said, I will bring, he said, verse seven, even everyone that is called by my name. Are you called by the name of Christ? For I have created him for my glory. For I have formed him. Yea, I have made him. Bring forth the blind people that the eyes and the deaf that have ears. Let all the nations be gathered together and let the people be assembled. Who, who among them can declare this and show us the former things? Let them bring forth their witnesses and with that they may be justified or let them hear and say it is truth. Come on, y'all. We got the promises of God right here just waiting for us to receive and walk therein. But getting still... We want to be gangsters and ballers and shot callers and pads walking off our butts. And then we get to court with our 165 pounds of all trigger finger and wind up in jail because we did not want to humble ourselves and go to, uh, and come to church and get to know God. There is no door on this earth that can be shut that God can't open. There is no door that is open on this earth that God can't close. I'm telling you this to show you where he has brought me from. He has brought me from a long way. Yes, from the south side, they call it the wild 100s right now, of the south side of Chicago. We called it the 10 tray, straight off of 103rd Street. Brought me from there, took me through the military, retired me and blessed me. And yes, I went through some trials and tribulations the whole time. And life is not without trials and tribulations. Life is about holding on to the promise, the promise of God. No matter what you face, he said, you're going to face them. You're going to face them. It's a part of life. They come against you. You're going to face trials and tribulations. But the word tells us God has delivered them out of them all. There's nothing you can go through that God can't bring you out of and bring you out blessed. Amen. Amen. He said, verse 10, you are my witnesses, said the Lord, my servant, whom I have chosen that I may know and believe that you may know and believe me and understand that I am he before me. There was no God form, neither shall there be after me. 
I, even I am the Lord and beside me, there is no savior. You, do you understand that? That's what I'm trying to get you to understand. The government is not your savior. The army, the, the air force, the space command, the, the military is not your savior. God is. Your education is not your savior. Your business is not your savior. God is. Your pastor is not your savior. <laughs> let me let me go there. Yeah, I had to go there. Because I don't be looking at me. Look, look to the hills. I'm looking to the hills which come with my help. It comes from the Lord. And that's why I'm pointing you to. Verse 12, he said, I have declared and have saved. I have showed when there was no strange God among you. Therefore, ye are my witnesses, said the Lord, that I am God. Saints, let me, let me take you back to remembrance. Remember when the children of Israel were in the desert for 40 years walking around? Yes, people want to look at that as a punishment. I, I got look at it this way. During those 40 years, they were not exposed to nothing but righteousness. Nothing but, and God had to let the mindset of those that were of old die in the desert so they wouldn't bring that old sinful mindset of Egypt into the new land. What? Into the land of the kingdom. When they came out of the desert, Every nation they faced fell before them. Why? Because they had been hallowed. Or should I say, they were holy. <coughs> <coughs> the same thing applies today. Walk in holiness and righteousness and nothing can stand before you. The walls of Jericho was huge. They were wide. They were no, no, that was an unpenetrable city. But God, did you hear me? There's no door on earth that God can't open. There's no door on earth that God can't close. There is no law in place that God can't overturn. No law. There is no sentence that you have right now in jail that God can't get you out of. All he asking you to do is believe. Repent and believe this gospel. That too much to walk, to carry yourself in dignity. He said, uh, he said, yeah, verse 13, yea, before the day was, I am he, and there is none that can deliver out of my hand. I will work and who shall let it? Thus said the Lord, your redeemer, the Holy One of Israel for your sake, I have sent to Babylon and have brought down their nobles and Chaldeans whose cry is in the ships. I am the Lord, your Holy One, the creator of Israel, your King. Yeah, we want to acknowledge him as Savior, but we don't want to acknowledge him as Lord. We don't want to acknowledge him as our King. And he's telling us who he is. He is our King. Thus saith the Lord, which maketh a way in the sea and a path in the mighty waters, which bringeth forth the chariot and the horse, the army and the power, they shall lie down together. They shall not rise. They are extinct. They are quenched as tow. Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. See, that's what's going on right now. <clears throat> Behold, verse 19, I will do a new thing. And now it shall spring forth, ye shall know it. I will even make a way in the wilderness and the rivers in the desert. The beast of the field shall honor me, the dragons and the owls, because I, have, I give waters in the wilderness and rivers in the desert to give me drink to my people, my chosen. This people have I formed for myself. They shall show forth my praise. And I'm going to say this right now for the people down in Jackson, Mississippi, those that know God, uh-huh, uh-huh, ask me this, have he not supplied your need? Hmm? Is he supplying your need right now? He said, never have I seen, you, you got to remind yourself of what, he said, never have I seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. We praying, we praying for you. Amen. 
And if you know it's something we can do, reach out. He said, there, never have he seen the righteous forsaken nor the seed begging bread. So come on, saints. Amen. I, he said, I formed thee that, that ye may show forth my praise, but thou hast not called upon me, O Jacob. But thou hast been weary of me, O Israel. Why won't we call on the Lord? Yes, we're men. Yes, we, we put a told us to handle it. But don't you know God handled it for us years ago? And he's still waiting to handle it now? Oh, I look, I, I'm, I'm guilty. I say I put an H on my, this H on my chest and handle it. That's what it stands for. But no, God handles everything. All he wants you to do is turn it over to him. He wants you to walk up right before him. He's going to say, oh, my servant needs me. Boom. Angels, go go help them out. Go go work with it. Work this out for them. He said, "Thou has not called upon me, O Jacob, but thou has been weary of me, O Israel. Thou has not brought me the cattle of thy burnt offerings, neither have thou honored me with thy sacrifices. I have I have not caused thee to serve with an offering, not wearied thee with incense." God didn't even require us to tithe in the New Testament. He didn't even require it. He just said, bring me an offering. He said, but y'all didn't even bring nothing. We have brought nothing. Matter of fact, man, we don't show up in church. Show up. I, even I am he that blotteth out thy transgressions for my own sake, and I will not remember thy sins. Thou has not, that, verse 24, thou has bought me no sweet cane with money. Neither has thou filled me with the fat of thy sacrifices, but thou hast made me to serve with thy sins. Thou have wearied me with thine iniquities. I, even I am he that blotted out thy transgressions for my own sake and will not remember thy sins. He said, put me in remembrance and let us plead together. Tell God what's going on and allow him to work it out on your behalf. Amen. Tell him what's going on and allow him to work it out on your behalf. Why? Because that's what he does. That's what he does. That's what God do. He said, put me in remembrance and let us plead together. Tell him what's going on. Tell them about how the government is treating you. Tell them how you applied for jobs and you can't get them. Tell them how you went to graduate to college and graduated and they still won't give you a job. Tell them, tell him everything and allow him to make a way for you. Put me in remembrance, he said. Let us plead together. Declare thou that thou mayest be justified. There's many traps that have been set for us in this nation that has been set to tear us down, but yet we have not called on the Lord. Why? Why can't you call? Why don't you stick your... <sighs> Put some air in your chest and call on the Lord. Plead with him. Let Plead your case with him. That's why they call it the throne of grace. Take your cares and cast them upon him and allow him to work on your behalf. But he said, thy fathers have sinned first. Thy teachers have transgressed me. Yep. Therefore, I have profaned the princes of the sanctuary and given Jacob the curse and Israel to reproaches. And that's why we find ourselves incarcerated. I don't know those of you who live in Houston, but one day I was down there on a Monday morning for court during the pandemic. And I saw a line around the block with nobody but us going into this building. And I said to myself, how many of us plan on, how many of them that walked in that building are leaving? That are leaving and going back home the way they walked in. 
This is every day in the Harris County Courthouse. I don't know what it looked like in Cook County. I don't know what it looked like in uh, Dallas County. I ain't been down there, but it was a shame. I was appalled. Yes, we have a cause to plead before God. We have a case to put up before the courts of heaven. But will you humble yourself and do it? It's time for us to repent and believe this gospel. He makes it plain and he makes it simple. I don't know about you, but I don't, I don't need a curse on my life. I don't need it. Father, I just thank you right now, Father, for who you are. I pray that this word touches the heart of your servants, O oh God, and will cause the men to come to a place of repentance with you. That will cause your your those of us who have you have called to be the head of household, our divine assignments to stay in contact with you, God, to lead our families, to lead our children, to lead our families to the place where you would have us to be, oh God. So, Father, I thank you right now, Father, that you bring us to a place of repentance. I thank you for the men that hear this call, this cry, Father, and, and not lean into their own understanding, but they're, start, they're seeking your face for answers, oh God. Father, those that have avoided the traps and those that even have fallen into the traps, God, Hear the cries of your servant, oh God, and blot out their iniquities and remove their transgressions, oh God, for your name's sake, oh Lord. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for yourself. Thank you for salvation. We thank you that your son came and Jesus, he died on the cross for our sins. And Father, we accept the gift. We accept it. We accept it today. We believe in our heart and know that you are the Lord. And Father, you gave your son that we may be washed and cleansed from all unrighteousness, that we may be found holy and acceptable in thy sight. So Father, we thank you today. And also, Father, I pray right now, Father, for those that in Mississippi that are suffering under the water shortages, God, Father, you, give me, you made a way out of no way. You caused water to flow from a rock. And I know, Father, that there are some on the outskirts that got wells that have not been tapped. Let them find the wells of old, O oh God. And, Father, begin to dig them up and open them up. And let your water flow, God, in the name of Jesus. And we just thank you for that right now, God. Father, I just thank you for it. I thank you for it. Father, I even, even on church properties on the outskirts of Jackson, Mississippi, there are wells underground, wells of water. And I thank you, Father, that you're leading them in those places, oh God. So Father, we bless you. We honor you, God, in the name of Jesus, oh God. We just thank you for it right now, Lord. We thank you for it right now. Yes, Lord, we thank you for it right now. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, I'm telling you, the Day of Atonement is coming, October 3rd and October 4th. We will be celebrating here at the La Quinta Inn in Frisco, over in uh, La Quinta, in Frisco. And so I'm asking you, it's all the men, the men, men, men. It's important that we repent because guess what? It's on us. It's on us. God, if we are responsible to God, God did not come down and say, Eve, where are you? God commanded us to come before him three times a year. And this is the third time that he's commanded us to come before us. There's the Feast of Trumpets coming at the end of September, like the 23rd, 24th round in there. And Rosh Hashanah. But I tell you, Yom Kippur, October 3rd and 4th, I'm asking you to join us here in Frisco, Frisco, Texas, that we can come before the Lord in repentance and allow God to cleanse us from all unrighteousness that we may plead our cause before him and allow him to open the doors before us that no man can shut and no man can stand before you. That these walls of the court system, the Jericho walls will begin to fall down. Amen. 
God bless you, and I look forward to seeing you. We'll see you again, again on Tuesday night at 7.30 p.m. God bless you, and I'll see you there. Have an awesome day. This is the day that the Lord, this is a Sabbath day. Get you some rest, okay, people? All right. Good night. Amen.